So in this next tutorial we're going to learn how we can make a white room studio shot and this one will be a bit different from the dark room studio shot because I'm going to try and show you how we can make it a sort of universal studio or white room studio similar to what we see in the default HRI so what we want to be able to see is that we can move around the car from any angle and still have sort of nice reflections especially down sort of the side panels and on the rear so you can really see the shape of this car and then maybe we can add additional lights you know to really bring out the shape of the car but first of all yeah we can see how this white room HDR can work and what we're going to do first is actually create this HDRI inside Photoshop so we can switch over to Photoshop and I'll show you how we can make a reflective HDRI for the car paints and the other parts and then also sort of like a diffuse just for general lighting and so Let's get started with that and we can switch to Photoshop. So once we've got that saved what we're going to do is make our second gradient and this is just going to be for our background so all we want is like a nice uh, white floor so the floor, the real floor, the physical floor will sort of blend in that we'll use like a nice gradient map to blend the floor in with the background and sort of get the sort of infinite plane but then we're going to add a little bit of a gradient on top so we fade you know have a nice sort of interesting background that doesn't look too standoutish but you know we want something that you know it looks nice so we'll do that just by creating a new gradient and what we'll do here again change the opacity we'll bring that down to up to 100 and then what we're going to do is place a couple more pins so we want the floor nice and white so around the floor I, I would say would be around here this sort of middle middle ground here so what we want to do is just add in a pin and we keep that white and then we add in another one and then we'll make that sort of 50% grey maybe so we have something like this and then we can move move it up like this and then you can see we can just dial it in so it gets around about there and yeah that looks that looks fine and then what we want to do here is make again our sort of our last plane, uh, last pin. Sorry, we we'll make this black, and then we want to just sort of fade in these pins, something like this. So we have a nice gradient, and maybe just push this one a little bit higher, something like that. So and we can maybe move this one along, and then we have sort of a nice fading gradient into the distance so we press OK and again we can save this and this one will be our white room background .hdr. We save that and we go back into VRED and we'll start creating our environments so now that we're back inside VRED, we can go ahead and make our environment. So what we're going to do here is just uh, right click and create create a new environment. And then we can select our white room reflection HDRI. And I don't know why it does this, but yeah, so now we can see that we have our nice reflection along the side of the car and you will also see that it comes around the back sort of around here and really shows off the shape of the car and you can look around the front of the bumper and again you can see nice shapes and these nice curves and then across the bumper here or across the hood we have a nice sort of gradient reflection also across the the front window and if you move around here a little bit on the side as well so what we're going to do now is basically we create this uh, dome and duplicate it and we'll call this uh, white room background and we'll change the name to this one to white room reflection ignore this and so in our materials again we'll find our white room reflection duplicate it and just rename it to background and then we can apply this one to the white room white room background sphere and then we find our white room background HDRI which is here I just wait that for that to load and then once that's in what we want to do is actually find our visible to reflections turn that off and if you see use as light source it's not doing anything at the moment so 
and keep that as it is. We want to keep this visible and then our white room reflection, we want to turn that off and then we want to use those light source, turn that off and then we can see visible and reflections turned on. And then what we can do is just sort of play around with the exposure to boost the reflections, things like this. And then generally, as you can see, it's already taking shape. We have a nice sort of white background. And then what we can do also is maybe add some texture to the floor. So what I will do is uh, create a new material and we'll make a fong material and then just add that onto the ground. And as you can see, you get this hard edge and we, we don't want to see that. We want sort of a nice fade off into the background. So what we'll do here is we'll add a texture and I personally like a uh, concrete texture so what I'm going to do is find my concrete textures and I'm just going to add this one here. And then what we'll do is switch the mapping type to UV. I think maybe 6 by 6 can be a nice value. And then we can also maybe just add in the glossy texture as well. And then we can just play around with the values, you know, if you want a bit less glossy or a bit a bit rough. And we can also, uh, to just kind of match the floor to m with the background, we can go to our use your input gamma, and then we can change this value to something like 1.5 to make it a little bit brighter, or maybe 1.2. We could go with something like this. So now you can start to see that it's, our white room is taking shape. And then what we can do now is actually use a uh, transparency texture. So we can blend the hard edge of the floor in with the background. So what we'll do is use texture. And then we'll find our gradient texture. So we can go in there. And it's just a very basic gradient texture, round gradient texture, so you know you can just do this quickly in Photoshop with the uh, radial gradient tool. So we load that in. And then what we want to do is set our uh, values or our mapping type to planar. And then we can sort of just play around with the, the size and you know as you can see it's quite like a checker dot at the moment so we want to go a bit bigger. Uh, we can just dial it in until you know we've got something that's maybe the right shape and actually we can just uh, we could actually manipulate it and then we can increase the scale quite a little bit so until we have something that you know is fitting in the floor like this and as you can see at the moment we have a link texture enabled so we want to disable that and then head back to our diffuse texture and then maybe set this back to UV and then 6 by 6 and also and here 6 by 6 so that should be fine now and now you can see what we can also do is maybe play around with the, the scale of the of the ground so on the shadow plane we want to maybe scale it in a bit, scale it down and then just start to play around again with the the opacity here so we want to maybe do this we can change this to cut out but you can see that this just gives us another hard edge which we don't want to use and I think our scaling is a bit off nope it's uniform so a little bit there but you know we can just play around with the size of this uh, this gradient texture so as you can see now it's still a little bit too big so we can bring that down And then we want to go back to manipulate, and it's not quite there, so maybe something like fit size. We want to move this around. In fact, maybe we can actually just hide the car so we can see a better area. And then you can start to see sort of the edges, uh, edges fading out, so we can maybe raise this up a little bit. And then we can turn off manipulate, turn back on the car, zoom in a bit. 
And you can still see maybe the edges are uh, a bit too hard, so perhaps we need to scale the projection size down a little bit and we can see maybe try and match this up. So we take 30,000 and here also 30,000. And we keep aspect ratio, so actually we can drop this down to 25,000. Go a bit less, 20,000. And there you can kind of see the, the sort of the floor blending in with the background now. So you can see it like this. And I think now if you view the car from any angle, you see it's nicely fading off. And you know what we could actually do is play around with some other settings, maybe inside the camera. We can change the white balance. Let's drop this down to something like 56,000 to give it a bit of a nicer, colder tint. And then we could even add some you know, some fog in there, sort of to give a nice dark and moody feeling. And then you can just play around with the values here, sort of the distance, just if you want a bit more white. And then, of course, you can play around with the noise density, which it gives a nice effect. And, of course, you can play around with the color. So. And you know you could actually you know, change to make the distance a little bit higher. Let's try six hours, and then you get an even nicer sort of fall off in the gradient. And you know it looks pretty cool here. Now, of course, you can also change the camera value. So right now we have a nice 24 millimeter, so it makes the car look nice and mean at the front. We can go up to 55, and of course the fog will change so what you want to do then is just play around with the fog values so we maybe go to 9000 on the distance 12000 and then you get sort of a nice fading shot and a good thing about this setup is that generally it should work with all the paint so if we go into our paint and we can make it blue and you see you still get this nice reflection and of course with red do that and of course with white and uh, now white is always a bit tough because you know everything's a bit brighter so um, you know you can just play around with your intensities of your HDRIs and and things like this if your your paint is blowing out but I think here it's it's looking quite nice it's quite cool and actually maybe we'll add in some in the camera processing we'll add in some glow and maybe some glare and then just sort of dial in with the threshold values and maybe we can get some nice glowing effects on this so it's look, looking pretty nice and one thing I want to do actually is maybe raise the floor a little bit just to make the car look a bit more grounded and then maybe we can also turn on the front lights again so something like this And we'll just let that render for a bit and see how it looks in a few minutes. So now we've rendered that for a couple of minutes. You can see that we've uh, actually got a really, really nice result. I think you can see um, what the gradient on the side is doing and also around the front. And, you know, just from creating two gradient HDRIs, we, yeah, like I said, we have a really nice result. And the great thing about this is that we can, you know, move the camera pretty much to any angle. I have this noise running here so we get a little bit of a faster result but you know just from any angle you can get a nice looking nice looking render and it looks really cool and the car can look good from you know sort of anywhere basically so we can move it around here lower the camera a bit and you know you've got the floor blending in nicely with the background we've got the fog giving some extra depth and you know we could add a couple of lights in there maybe along the wheels just to give some more nice reflections. We could add some like point lights and various parts of the car just to give some extra nice pings and things like this. And, you know, you can even go on the top view like this. And yeah, just overall, it gives you like a really nice result. And it's actually really simple to achieve. Um, I think, you know, if you try to do this with uh, normal standard lights, it takes quite some time, but just with a basic, gradients and some you know nice 
tricks and tips with the fog and things like this. Blue glare really bring it out a little bit more. It's a really good result.